we're an educational order. Mary Ward is a much greater gift than that. She desired that we would respond to whatever were the needs congruous to the times. We in our province have just set up a mission in southern Sudan where there are no secondary schools for girls. Uh, that is the need that's there. Perhaps it's akin to what Mary Ward herself endeavoured to do back in the 1600s. Mary Ward's followers have set up the first secondary school in the southern Sudanese town of Rumbek. This region is slowly getting back to normal after a long and bitter civil war. For these students, the school represents opportunities which were not available to previous generations. Today we have 46 girls. They're coming out of a culture where their mothers have not been educated, where their aunts have not been educated, where their grandmothers certainly have not been educated. So absolutely these girls are going to struggle. They really are going to struggle. It's a difficulty because you open their eyes to a brighter future. You know, we often tell them about Mary Ward and in time to come women will do great things. These girls will dream and are beginning to dream great things, but the culture is so strong against them. Like countless others, Elizabeth's family were evicted from their home in Khartoum during the Civil War and lost everything. Yet even now, in the relative safety of Rumbek, Elizabeth still has battles to fight. There are many people who don't like girls to be in school because they might think that the girl might choose her own husband or might do things that they don't like. The fate of girls from the Dinka tribe is traditionally decided from the moment they are born. Girls like Elizabeth can expect to have a marriage arranged for them by their male elders, and they could expect to receive a substantial number of cattle in return for her. My father decided and come, and come to my mother. So he told my mother, you, let's take this only girl to the cattle camp. That's where we will be having a lot of cows if we take her out in the school. So my mother heard this and said, no, I can't do that. In our culture, because our people like cattle, their whole life depends on cattle. If the girl marry with a lot of cattle, that's, where, that's what they like. And that's why they don't want to send the girls to school. These girls are what we would call survivors. They've already survived so much to be here today. They have survived the war. Most of them would have had to move from their homes. They were internally displaced people. They would have lost at least one family member. Some of them have defied family traditions and family cultures to be here. And certainly there are many of them here that you'll meet who have fought against their family to come back and to stay here. Some of ours will talk about stories being beaten by their uncles. They'll talk about stories of refusing their family, refusing their father's desire for them to be married. And it's really quite a struggle for them. As well as the girls' family struggles, sisters Orla Tracy and Anne Mary Murphy work in an area affected by the broader political conflict, where violence can flare up and tensions reignite. There is um, a sense of um, anxiety as to whether the peace process will hold. And also with the different tribes, there's all, there are so many skirmishes, so many people being killed every other week. I was here a few weeks when about, I think, over 20 people were killed one day and maybe the next week there were 14. Every person that we meet has been through the, the trauma of war. And when I think of the students that we have, they are all war children, they are all survivors of the war. And, they, you know, um, they sometimes tell you stories about how they, how they have come to survive until today. The school is also working with the girls to help them come to terms with the past. Samuel Deng Dut is an ex-soldier of the Civil War. He knows firsthand the trauma that these girls have had to cope with in previous years. I'm helping them to cope with the situation like 
I give them sometimes a few lessons on trauma healing and uh, how they should uh, behave towards one another. There is a saying that you can walk like a slave and then you eat like a king. During the war, we were really the slave of war. But now, we are seeing the better of which in future, like this school, it was not there before. It was not a place that being renewed. It is just newly started. That is a good sign for us. That means all, what our, all our needs are being met slowly by slowly. One of the most obvious indicators of change is that for the first time in generations, the girls from Rumbeck will have an opportunity to participate in free and democratic elections. They, these girls have never voted nor have they ever seen voting because the last time voting happened it was well before they were born. So this is the first democratic vote that will happen in southern Sudan. The other important thing to say is that in all of the elections, 25% of those elected should be female. So when you meet the girls and you ask them, this is the new Minister of Education in the future. This is the Minister for Prisons. What did you say? You want to be a doctor? A lot of the students have dreams of going into politics and reforming the system. And the particular ministry they all want to get into is education, because they feel if they get into it that they can reform the educational system, particularly for the girls and for the women. I would like to join politics. I would like to be in government forces and to be there to serve and to defend my country. And after it, after I got all those jobs, I'll get married and have my own children and to continue with my children and put them into school. We have girls here coming from different parts of our diocese and different parts of Lake State. So they're stretching from a, a huge area and from many different sub-tribes and different tribes. The dream obviously for us is yes, that they will be able to, that ripple effect will be there and that they'll be able to reach out to others as well. Just only few girls are in the school now. But for time to come, we will be educated and we will tell the parents who are left behind, who don't put their parents, their daughters in the school, so that they will make up their minds to put their daughters in the school. There is a spirit here. There's a, I feel that Mary Hord's charism is alive and well here. No matter what they do when they leave here, whether they're mothers of families or whether they're in a job or in government, I think that they will bring an atmosphere of peace. I think they will work for peace. I think they, I believe they will work for justice. And I think, I do believe that even now they have a hope for a new Sudan. It is said that to educate a girl, you educate the nation. And if you educate the boy, you educate the family. So, if the father and put the daughter in the school, the daughter will be educated and share in the life of the nation. Because, as I know now, Southern Sudan has left behind because of civil war. And who can change this nation? It is I and my colleagues who are in the school now. There are many cultures still where women are considered to be second class. Girls don't have the same opportunities as boys. From the beginning, Mary Ward said, there is no such difference between men and women that women may not do great things. And I hope it will be seen in time to come that women will do much. We still haven't seen all that women can do in the Catholic Church. And above all, I want to see Mary Ward's dream come true.